When uh, you think about the world space industry, what generally came in your mind in something big, complex, with huge investment, with big company dealing with this. And finally, with a very little place for startups. As potential entrepreneurship entrepreneur, you, you could think space is a dream, but there is no place for me in this dream. If you think so, you are wrong. I will explain you why. First, let's say what, what is space industry. Roughly, there are two different areas. One, the first, is the building of satellites, of rockets, and everything which is needed to operate these satellites. The second area, which is closer to digital world, is all the use of data coming from satellites. Telecommunication data, data for localization, GPS and Galileo, and all the data coming from satellites that are observing the Earth. It's true to say that to build satellites needs huge uh, investment, huge uh, installation like, like this. It's right to say that it's quite difficult to access to the data coming from satellites to process them. Um, so in the past, it's true that there were a little number of companies that were, were created around space. They, these companies were generally created by very well qualified people generally coming from existing space company. But it was the past. And now you have a chance. You have a chance to live in a wonderful period for, uh, for space. A period in which a lot of modification of this industry allow to do a lot of things. Let's start the story 10 years ago with GPS. In 2007, the GPS was operational for 20 years. At this time, it was used, of course, for military, but for a lot of professional use with dedicated terminals like this. So, the number of companies that were creating new services was limited because for each new services, you needed to create a specific terminal. So the market was niche market. And suddenly, in 2007, something appeared that changed the game, the smartphone. And the smartphone allowed the convergence between space information to locate, to locate you everywhere in the world with a mobile terminal with processing, visualization, and data transmission capabilities. And this has changed everything. This convergence has opened an area of thousands of new ideas. And, of course, new companies. Who could have imagined in 2007 the, all the services and the company that are already, that now familiar to us, and like Waze, Hubble, TripAdvisor, Tinder. <laughs> uh, these comp company and application have completely changed everything and even some societal rules itself. And which is important to, to see, it's that these companies 
this new company have not been created by space people. They have been created by developer, business people, and so on. This is the first chapter of the story. The second chapter of the story came some years ago in the another field, the manufacturing, the building and manufacturing of satellites. Some investors coming from mainly from United States, they begin to consider that space sector, finally, it's a sector like another sector, full of business opportunity. And they begin to build satellites, to build rockets with new methods, with uh, new technology, with uh, ideas coming from another sectors. Their name, you know them, Elon Musk from SpaceX, Richard Branson from Virgin, uh, Greg Weiler for uh, OneWeb, Planet Labs. They came in the game only five years ago, and they changed everything. They came with new ideas, but they came as well with new dreams. Vision would like to democratize the space tourism. SpaceX would like to make a reserve rocket and go to, to Mars. Planet Labs would like to make a permanent monitoring of the Earth. OneWeb is developing a system to give internet everywhere to everyone in the world with a low price. So they, are, they were changing the rule of the game. So we are now with these two chapters, with a story which is continuing to write. And now there are some new chapters to write. And you have to write this new chapter. But what are the themes of this new chapter? One of the first, of the first theme of this new chapter is the use of all the information coming from Earth observation satellites. The development of Earth observation satellites has a quite long story. It began 50 years ago, of course, for military. But very quick, the application of these satellites came in all the sector of life. Meteorological aspects, climate, environment, agriculture, and so on. And now they are essential to all these subjects. But it's, it was and it's still a bit complex to use all this data coming from satellites for several reasons. The data are a bit expensive. It's quite difficult to, to find this data, to get in, to process this data, and so on. The precision of the images are not enough for certain kind of application. And the frequency of images you get is not, is not enough. So this means that you are not sure to get the good image at the good moment of a place in the, on the Earth. So there are some limitations of the use of, of these images. However, there, is, there are some factors that let us thinking that we, may, we will enter in a new area for the use of these satellites. The first factor is the huge increase of the number of these satellites from the private sector and from the public sector. For example, Planet Labs has launched last week 88 new satellites. Copernicus is launching regularly some new satellites from public phones. And this explosion of the number of Earth observation satellites have some interesting consequences for you, for us. <laughs> the first one is the price is decreasing. The second, you have more and more frequent image, so it's more and more simple to get the image 
on, on the place. We can imagine that in some year, there will be a permanent monitoring of the Earth, like the camera you have in town. The precision is increasing very quick due to the technology and the concurrence. Today, it's 30 centimeters. Airbus has announced that it will be 20 centimeters in two years. And uh, the, the kind of uh, images of sensors that are used by these satellites is more and more diverse. So you can get radar information, you can get LIDAR information, and all this information are complementary for, for, for different use. But there is a problem with this explosion of number. It's the amount of data generated. We are speaking about petabyte, new petabyte each year. So the use and the processing of all the data will be only possible by the second factor, is the development of all the big data and cloud capability. With this capability, anyone anywhere in the world with only an internet connection could use huge capacity from cloud provider. So everyone is able to process huge quantity of data everywhere. And the cloud provider, they are providing more and more efficient tool for using these images, because for them it's a market. The third factor is that in combination to this global data, we have more and more local data coming from open, open data, coming from all the cloud sources data from your smartphone, coming from objects through Internet of Things object. And all this data, local one, could be combined with global data from satellites. And with the IT capability, you are able to develop local services adapt to your local needs, combining this global view and this local view. And we think this is a huge area of development of entrepreneurship. There are already some companies that are doing this kind of things. This company, Terranis, they are providing to winemaker in France uh, the good um, the information about the good time for the harvest. There are another company that provides to you on your smartphone the quality of air and so on. And personally, I have a lot of dream. I have a dream to monitor wild animals in Africa to prevent poaching. I have dreamed to provide to the 1.3 billion of farmers in the world precise information about their production, about their risk to avoid any famine. More generally, I have a dream to be able to provide to anyone, anywhere, the needed information, the crucial information on his smartphone. So you have to write this chapter. But for entrepreneurship, which is important, it's to have a new market. And what is a new market? A new market is a fulfilling of a societal pain. And currently, we have a huge societal pain, which is the planet itself. The planet is becoming a garden, whole garden. And as for Ho Garden, we would like to monitor it, to, to take care of it. And, for example, to monitor the deforestation, to monitor that, that the air we are breathing, it's good, it's good for our child. And the satellite is a perfect tool for that. With Earth observation satellites, you have the world in your hands. So this is the second the chapter to be right on this field. There is one another team for a new chapter, which is in satellites area. 
Indeed, we are entering in a nanosatellite period. What is a nanosatellite? A nanosatellite is a small satellite, quick to build, cheap, quite standard. The story of nanosatellite began with university, when they build these satellites for their students. But now these satellites are coming in a business area. And here as well, they are changing everything. Because for the first time, it's possible to build satellites dedicated to very precise use, which was not the case in the traditional industry. Indeed, the satellites were big, complex, expensive. And so you have to build satellites that are able to do a, a large um, panel of observation to, be, to sell to different customers. With nanosatellites, it's different. You can build satellites for very precise use. And this is due to the standardization of these satellites it's possible to create company dedicated to very precise use. And we begin to see a lot of these companies, mainly in USA, but as well in Europe. Earthcube, a French company, is building some satellites like this only to monitor pipeline flu. It's a very precise uh, mission. And so this period is very is opening a lot of opportunity for people who would like to create this kind of mission. As you see, we are just at the beginning of a story of entrepreneurship in space. Now, it's up to you to write the throne of a story. It's only a question of wishes, of imagination, of ideas, of dreams. And one very important thing is that now everything is possible everywhere. Keep it in mind. You may say I'm a dreamer. I hope I'm not the only one.